Hello, I'm Cody Smith, and I'm here with my, well, not so pristine 1964 Mercury Monterey, but I'm working on it. I've done quite a few videos with this car, and so far, I had the heads rebuilt, put a new intake on it, put a Fitec fuel injection on it, new convertible top, carpet, uh, quite a bit of stuff. It's running and driving okay, but what it really needed was the whole bottom end of the engine rebuilt and a good cleaning. Here's just part of the nasty pile of grease that fell out from under this car. So I have taken the engine out. It's already gone. The transmission's gone too. The original three-speed Cruzomatic uh, worked fine. I had fixed the shift shaft seal, the rear seal, the rear bushing, done quite a bit of work to it, but I wanted overdrive. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, the block is currently at the machine shop. It's getting Silverlight 1131. 30 over uh, hypertechic pistons. Which will be far better than the old pistons that were in this thing. Look at the dish on those. This was maybe 8.7 to 1 compression. The heads are at a different shop uh, where it's getting new oversized uh, hardened exhaust seats. The old ones underneath the seat was really beaten out. Uh, I don't know if it was a bad install job previously but in order to fix that, they are putting in a larger seat and it's actually getting larger valves. I'm not putting any larger valve on the intake side. Those are 203, but the exhaust on uh, the 64 was 1.55 and that's going up to 1.65. Uh, this is a big cruiser. It doesn't need uh, you know, the CJ valves or even aftermarket heads, anything like that. Those C4 AEG heads that this had flow really well. Now for a cam, it's getting uh, Oregon Custom Cam Grinders is making a custom hydraulic roller for it. Uh, lift I believe is going to be uh, 525 intake and exhaust, 224 duration intake, 230 exhaust on a 112 split. That 112 working well with the Phytec unit. Now going over here to the exciting new parts uh, that are going to be going on the car actually going to go to one that's almost off camera right here because I'm really excited about this one. These have been hard to find. This is a Blue Thunder dual plane intake. Now before I had an Edelbrock Streetmaster on it. And the reason I'm going to this one is because I like it a lot. It's going to look very original with the firing order uh, stamped into it. It has a provision for the oil fill hole. So the tube's gonna come up here and I can use the factory original valve covers again. It has the port dimensions to match my factory C4 low riser heads, which are huge. Uh, the Streetmaster were tiny. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much that you're going from that small port into the big port, but I like this. <laughs> so like I said, I had really cool valve covers on it. I like these a lot. These are Mercury script. These would have been on a 66 Mercury 410. And I use these because they have a provision for a PCV. That's what I was running, PCV here. And the other one has uh, the breather. And that's actually a better setup than doing it through the oil fill hole uh, in front of the intake and PCV in the back of the intake. Uh, which is how this Blue Thunder is going to work. But these Mercury valve covers that came on it, these I got to clean up and paint again. These are the original valve covers with no PCV provision. These came on early FEs before PCV. And I just really want to go back to these because of that original vintage look that you just don't quite get out of the later canted valve covers. And before you message me to see if those Mercury valve covers are for sale, this is my fourth FE project so far. I'm keeping them because I'm going to use those eventually. Uh, I'm not going to hoard them away. Those will end up on a car. These old FEs are not immune to oil problems. Now, the oil pan on this car was completely beaten up. Uh, it looked like it had gone over, you know, Moab rock crawling or something. So, <laughs> got this Canton kick out pan. It's going to fit. Nice in the front. There's plenty of room for this kick out. Give me a little more oil capacity in the front. So I'm pulling up a hill. 
Um, I'm now pushing all the oil back to the shallow pan away from the pickup. And this baffle here is gonna help keep that oil down in the pan. All right, so then for that hydraulic roller cam I talked about again, Oregon Cam Grinders providing the cam. Uh, the lifters I got from Schneider Cams in, uh, I think they're out of San Diego, but they were the ones who could get me the Gatorman lifters the fastest. Now, I was gonna order lifters from Howard's. They had a set available, but their street series come from Morel as a manufacturer. And Morel's actually had quite a few issues recently. Uh, I've heard from multiple engine builders, uh, parts suppliers, even Howard's um, that supplies Morel for their street series, then their max endurance are Gatorman. If you call them, they recommend the Gatorman. Now Schneider carries the Gatorman, so that's what we got here. And they are a really nice set. I actually had the Morels here for a bit, and I sent them back. Um, one thing you can notice right away is the roller on the bottom is a lot wider. It looks more durable, and when pushing down on the cup on the inside with a push rod to sort of check if the plunger's stuck, the morels I couldn't move. These move, these aren't stuck. So um, a little credibility to the idea that maybe Morel's working through some issues right now. So I'm very happy I got these uh, Gatorman lifters and not having to worry about cam break in using specific zinc heavy oils will be a really nice benefit of these. I'm just gonna run a synthetic 530 in it after the uh, you know rings are broken in in the block. Start on conventional, switch to a synthetic 530 and not have to worry about oils anymore because I don't have a flat tap of cam anymore. All right, a couple other pieces for the engine. I'm going to use Phytex capacitive discharge ignition. This plugs right into the Phytech unit and will give me that multiple spark at low RPM. That's cool. Also, this is sort of related to the transmission swap, but I'm going to a computer controlled transmission. So uh, US Shift sells this adapter that will plug into the throttle position sensor on the Phytech and then split that signal, one signal to uh, the Phytech that needs it and another signal to the transmission that needs it. It's one little plug, very handy. Also, because I don't want that Phytech uh, ignition just kind of sitting under the hood looking like new stuff because I'm working really hard to kind of hide all of that, I got this permatuned sticker off of eBay. Uh, this is what you would have found on a transistorized ignition system that was available for one of these cars. So I'm gonna 3D print a little cover that goes over that, put this over the top, and keep it looking straight out of 1964. Okay, another piece here, glue to the box. Now, with that hydraulic roller cam, that's a billet steel camshaft. So you can't use the iron cam gear that would have come from uh, MSD on my distributor. Now they would recommend brass, uh, but that wears out quite easily. Uh, but since I'm using an MSD distributor and they use the shaft size of say a big block Ford, there is a composite gear. These are supposed to be, I think three times more durable than brass, but they're still uh, able to be used on a steel cam core. So quite handy. This thing's crazy light. Uh, so I'll be using that. Another reason to use an MSD bullet distributor with an FV like this. I mean, they work great. Especially with the Phytech, it's just plug and play. Right, and the last cool engine part so far are the exhaust manifolds. Now, these look just like they might come off a 1962 406 or a 390 police interceptor in 1964. Instead of the terrible log manifolds that are on there, it's getting these shorty header manifolds. Uh, these are not original 1962s. These are being produced brand new by Kugel Components, K U. G-E-L, and they run 750 bucks. They're a bit expensive, but there's no rust. There's no broken tabs. Uh, they are straight and nicely machined. So to keep the vintage look, instead of going to a header, I'm really excited to be using these. Now moving on to the transmission. I don't have it here, but it's going to be a 4R70W, something that would have come out of an 01, 
to 03 uh, Mustang GT is where the core came from. Now the guy I'm buying it from, transmission builder in Santa Rosa, he put the 03 up gear set in it, which is a bit stronger. It'll still take the factory speedometer cable from my car and be a really nice unit. I'm gonna be going from a 2.4 first gear ratio in this car to a 2.87 first gear ratio. So a lot more launch out of, uh, from a stoplight. Plus I'm gonna change the rear end gears out from a 3.0 to a 3.55. That 4R70W has a 0.7 to one overdrive ratio. Essentially uh, with that new transmission, new gears, it'll be like if I put four tens behind this car in first gear with the transmission plus rear end ratio change. But then in overdrive going down the highway, it'll be like I have 243 rear gears, which is an awesome combination uh, between the two to have that aggressive start from a stoplight and yet be so calm on the interstate. Overdrives are great. To make that happen, I have a lot of aluminum from transmission adapters, uh, speed gems. This is gonna go between the engine and the transmission and a little bolt to the engine and then bolt to the transmission and adapt the two. And then from Bauman Electronics, I have a quick four controller that is going to allow that computer controlled transmission to work in the old car. The combination of EFI and computer controlled overdrive transmission, this thing's gonna be a honey. To make the shifter work, I will be using the factory column shifter with this low car shift lever. This slot here allows you to place um, the lever wherever you need for the right ratio between park and low that you get all your gears. So really nice, cool piece, make it nice and easy. I was, I was really tempted to just go get Ford's new Godzilla 445 push rod V8. The big problem there is their control pack's not out yet, their front accessory drive isn't out yet, and I don't know, I haven't seen anybody do one on one of these full-size cars yet. I don't want to be the one testing to see how things fit around the steering, the oil pan, and all that. So, love the FE stuff. Nothing looks cooler. It's great. Uh, it's a right look when you open the engine, and with that uh, new transmission, you know, fully rebuilt engine, having the Phytech, really excited to get this thing back on the road. So far for the big pile of parts, I'll be doing uh, videos as I go of things coming together, uh, setting up that new camshaft, push rod length, uh, things like that, getting that new transmission bolted up, going through the quick four controller, all that. So uh, please, you know, follow the channel if you want to see those videos as well.